Okay, here's one on an uh, early American site known as Bluefish Caves. Bluefish Caves is an archaeological site in the Yukon, Canada, located 54 kilometers or 34 miles southwest of the Van Witt Gwynchen community of Old Crow, from which a human-worked jawbone of a Yukon horse has been radiocarbon dated to 24,000 years before present, earlier than a generally accepted age for habitation of the New World, there are three small caves in the area, and a Yukon horse, we've done a lot about horses here, but a Yukon horse is really what we would call an Eurasian steppe horse. And so at the time, a close relative of the Eurasian steppe horse had been able to come all the way across in the Americas and had been having, habitating the Americas for a long, long time before this too at this point, but they died off along with all the other major mega flora and fauna during the last ice age. When we look at the map here, where we're talking about is being found right about here. And so it's up in the Yukon area in Canada. But when we talk about this, we have to figure in one thing that we know now that we didn't know when the first people were talking about Clovis first and so on. For whenever this time was going on, the last glacial maximum, the sea was so much lower that every area that you see that it's light blue here was actually land. In fact, going out of the picture to your left in Alaska and the Bering Strait thing would have been quite a wide swath of land. They're going to have to change that, and you'll find, well, if you've been alive for a few decades now, you'll find that they've changed this whole idea but are still not presenting it in school. They're still giving that same old 1970s book to kids and explaining it. But all these areas that are in between this were all land. The water level was sucked down more, and there was a great catastrophe that happened that looks like a meteoric or cometary fragment came in and peppered all of North uh, America here, which was under a few kilometers of ice at the time some people say that this it's possible that portion of this giant lake reservoir here and that leads into it would have been from it and some of these other aspects but the whole of what we're looking at now even into north america quite, quite well was all up under these glaciers at that time and it doesn't really correlate to having left craters and things that actually could be seen at, at any rate whatsoever. And then, of course, with all the melting and washing through and washing it away, you can make footprints in the sand in the edge of a beach, and it just takes a wave or two and whoosh. You were never there. Bluefish Cave was initially known to the local First Nations, what was popularized by a fishing expedition in 1976, and later by researchers. This site was made up of three small caves ranging from 10 to 30 meters, basically a 1,060 cubic foot. The first cave contains various animal bones that appeared to have been dragged there by predators, but findings of tool marks and some tools themselves pointed towards an early human presence. Old Crow Flats, another important area with early human presence, are located about 75 kilometers northeast of the bluefish caves. I think they show you a picture here where we can see this flats area out here and people having occupied that. Although when they occupied it, the ocean wouldn't have been right there and inundated through this spot. It would have been hundreds of feet lower. So there's a lot of sites that when people see them like this think that it's even somewhat coastal. But in reality, that wasn't coastal at the time. The site was excavated by archaeologist Jacques King Mars between 1977 and 1987, over a 10 year period, and the initial radiocarbon dating suggested an age of 24,000 years before present, 22,000 BC. This was considered controversial as it's in contrast to the Clovis first theory widely accepted by academics at the time. 
letting you know that it's no longer accepted anymore. It cannot be because of all of these fines. That considered the earliest settlement of North America to be around 13,000 years before present or 10,500 BC, which strangely correlates exactly with this Younger Dryas event. A review of the site in 2017 found it to be over 24,000 years old, lending support to the Beringian standstill hypothesis. This is one where the ancestors of Native Americans spent considerable time isolated in a Beringian refuge during the last glacial maximum before populating the Americas. This idea, because they found sites up there, they said, well, they came to a certain point and they were stuck in this little cul-de-sac and then whenever the Younger Dryas event or something, they come running down through and people have looked at that and said, no, because the Galt site is 18,000 BC and how did they get there before? There's a lot of weird anomalies like this that make it known that you can't have had the Clovis first idea whenever there's three or four waves of people that predate that. And you can look at the Calico dig site and it goes back 200,000 BC. Mammoths with markings on them found in San Diego and so on that say 130,000 years and they were willing to go with it until the dating came out on it and they went, well, then no then. No, it, it's yes then and you have to rethink things. Science works in this way it's a mysterious thing where we get to figure things out and use reality instead of forcing agendas on people. This was last edited last year in November in 2020. And this is early January 2021 when I'm putting this out. But we're just rolling through this again and I need to put a category in of early Americas or something along that line because I have over 30 videos on this type of subject. And there's a lot more still coming. Yeah, some other correlations. Other than artifacts that we found, writing that's very conspicuous, strange boat depictions, the idea of Michigan copper, and so on. We'll get on to those. Like, share, and subscribe. And enjoy. Peace.